Academy Wolves tonight. Friday night action from the Den. Lands over the call for HDTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial. Streaming worldwide and archived at www.htv.us. Opening tip moments away. Cats dressed in the purple and gold tonight. It's a Hardwick Academy night here at the Den. Cats control the tip. Moody hands it off to get inside. Morrison doesn't get it to go. Peoples with the ball. X picking the ball up. Moody. Pitch inside. Morrison tries it inside one more time. Gets it to drop. Ryan Morrison. Ryan the little lion. Opens things up here tonight. 7.24 left to go in the first. Cats up to zip. Inside. Camden Strong. Cats will inbounds. X, Avier, Hill. Hands it off, Moody. Takes a three. Doesn't drop, rebound. Harrison Frazee. Hands off, ball taken away. Sullivan LaFlamme got a warrior. hand in there. X looking to go coast to coast, brings it up. Shot in the foul for Xavier Hill. Lady Cats section in full bloom over there tonight in purple and gold. Always get up for a PA game. We played him twice so far this season. Xavier Hill at the line looking to complete the three-pointer, and he does. First, uh, both times back in December, a Dave Morse Classic and uh, down in Barrie at the, at the uh, Solstice Tournament. And we both came with, we came with victories both times. 73-33 was the score of one, 73-38 of the other game. But toss the records out, toss previous games out anytime these two teams get together. Anything can happen at any time. Sullivan, the left lamb. Hard to the hoop. Seven zip. 620, 619, 618. Ticking down here in the first. Whitney back over. He was looking at Strong. Whitney swings this way to Frazee. Frazee's going to take a shot. That's off. Rebound Hazen. Here we go. Up ahead, Morrison. X, turnaround shot up. Xavier Hill. Five points already for the senior. Score is nine zip with 5.49 left to go in the first quarter. And PA coach Todd Yando wants to take a timeout. Michael, would you like me to try and read sponsors, or are you still working feverishly? All right, you're watching Hazen Wildcat Basketball here on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Our sponsors tonight, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and Green Mountain Technology and Career Center, gmtcc.lnsd.org. Jumpstart your future. Lance Hall with the call, Michael on tech, Casey on camera. And we've got 5.49 left to go here in the first quarter. Cats are up 9-zip. Once again, you're seeing a lot of purple and gold here tonight. Um, Hardwick Academy, celebrating all things Hardwick Academy. We renamed the team the Terriers for the uh, starting lineups. And uh, just having a good time out here tonight. Big crowd. Of course, it's Friday night. But a bigger crowd than usual. A lot of Academy alumnus here as well. Ball back in play, PA with possession. Hudson Mace over. Whitney gets it to Mace. Mace with the flam on him. Back inside, ball taken away. Xavier Hill weaves his way through, pitches over. Moody's gonna take a three. That one's short, rebound, Camden Strong. Hudson Mace 
Puts up a shot, rolls in. First points of the game for the Wolves. Makes it 9-2 with 5.04 left to go in the first. Here's strong, uh, Brendan Moody going to the hoop. You usually see Brendan shooting threes. He's put down a two that time. 11-2 is your score. PA looking to make something happen here. Mace gets it over here to the near side. Whitney. Whitney with X on him. Runs into the screen. X did. Quinn Kalp is having a nice screen. Hazen comes up with it, though. Battle on the floor. Here's Xavier Hill inside. Shot and the foul. X-Man coming to play tonight. Referee John Diebold calls the foul on Quinn Kalp, his first. And Cale Cochran will come in. X is going to go to the line. Try and complete the three-pointer the old-fashioned way. And he does. 14-2. 4-19 left to go here in the first. Hudson Mace. Around the far side. Over there in the corner. Back out. Cochran. Far side. Back up. Frazee. Wants to go in, back outside. Kelp goes up. Foul called. Foul called on Gabriel Mitchell. There's Frazee. Pitches back, uh, Mace with the ball now. Trying to work around Sully. Mace throws up a floater, doesn't go. Rebound, Morrison. Get us up ahead, X. Moody snuck in behind. Four points for the junior and a 16-2 lead with 325 left to go in the first. Cochran gets it to Strong. Strong, Moody. Picks it away. Man, I didn't even see that pass go. Laflam came through. I didn't even see the pass. Cochran. He's back. Here's Frazee. Frazee on the inside. He picked up his foot. Eighteen two, your score. Two forty-five left to go here in the first. It's been all cats all this quarter. The flam pass over. Referee Jeff Vincent calls a foul on Kale Cochran. Cats will inbounds from underneath. X on the inbounds. 238 left to go here in the first. 18 2, your score. Pass inside Morrison. Can he turn around? Gets the turnaround. Four points for the senior. Turnaround on Mason Wells. Standing right there with him. Dylan Knight in now. Gets this one to Cochran. Back outside. Kalp. That was Wells getting it over to Strong. Back to Cochran. Strong. Cross court, Wells. Doesn't take the shot, pitches back over, open for the three, way off. Girls let him know what kind of ball that was. X, doesn't go. And 
I heard all kinds of body smacking out there. 148 left to go in the first. Foul ends up being called on Ryan Morrison. And coming up with the ball is Dylan Knight. 140 left in your score, 20 to 2. Or 135 left in the first quarter, I mean, 20 to 2 is the score. It's Cochran, drive inside, pass over. Nice pass, wow. Nice pass, though, to get it over there. X, going to take a long three. Doesn't go Wells with the rebound. Gets it over here. Camden Strong bringing it up. Cochran. Pitch inside. Frees up for the shot. Doesn't go. Mitchett fights off Wells for the rebound. Beautiful. Fenton Meyer goes up. And uh, we got a foul call. That'll send Meyer to the line. 48.1 left here in the first. Camden Strong called on the foul. Cats up 20 to 2. Meyer at the line. Fenton Meyer off on his first free throw. The pistol. Checks in. Sullivan Laflamme comes. Is Sull nope. Uh, X is going to come out. Sullivan's going to stay in. We put in the pistol. Jamison Lamar. X goes out. Two, four, six, eight points already here in the first quarter. Fenton rolls in his second shot. Makes it 21 2. 48.1 left to go. Whistle. Foul called on Kelp. Shot. Three pointer made by Camden Strong. 21 5, 28 seconds left. The pistol. Jamison Lamar makes his presence felt out there immediately. Nice cut to the hoop, the soft scoop. Trying to go underneath to uh, Nick Pierce. And that's going to run out the first quarter with the uh, Cats up 23-5 to here playing the People's Academy Wolves. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Sponsors tonight, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, We Sport Hayes Athletics and Green Mountain Technology and Career Center, gmtcc.lnsd.org. Jumpstart your future. Let's not forget the uh, Knights of Columbus free throw contest coming up Sunday, January 28th, 1 p.m. here at the Hayes Gym. Open to boys and girls ages 9 to 14. And uh, let's see what happens here with the start to the second momentarily. It's been all cats all the time. Brendan Moody with four. Lamar with two. Xavier Hill with eight. Sullivan Lamb with four. Fenton Meyer with one. Ryan Morrison with four. Over on the other side, Hudson Mays with two. And Strong with that three to make it 23-5. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. And I think this will, uh, we don't have another game here at the Den until uh, next Friday when the girls will be hosting Blue Mountain. And that night's going to be celebrating uh, the championship, the uh, 
Wildcat Championship ladies teams from the uh, early and mid-70s. Strong back to Whitney. Down inside, broken up. Brendan Moody, pass inside the pistol. Trying to pick up his dribble. Back outside, Moody's thinking about taking it. Sullivan, Laflamme. Coming around, back. Moody. Gets the three, shooters roll. 7.20 left to go in the first half. Cats up 26-5. Pass broken up. Here comes the pistol. Oh, <laughs> oh Jameson. <laughs> I love it. I love it, but he tried to get just a touch too fancy. Love, love the attempt, though. And I'll tell you, just, just because of Jamison Lamar, I went to YouTube and I watched a bunch of, of Pete Maravich highlights. I mean, that guy was just a wizard with the ball. And Jamison does his best. Nice pass inside. <laughs> Wells can't get a shot to fall, though. Inside, Mitchin. And I believe... All right, who's trying to get a number here? So I don't want to get them mixed up. All right, I don't have a 25. So I'm thinking that is Morgan, Mitchett, and All right, Gabe's coming in. Yeah, all right, so 25 is Morgan. Okay. All right, so he got the shot, I believe. Now he's... Or did he just get fouled? He, yeah, so he's, uh, yeah, okay. All right. The, the number thing threw me off there for a momentarily, but he got the shot, then they called the foul, so he completed the three-pointer. And with 6.38 left to go here in the first half, it's Cats up 29-5. It's a double-team PA. Pass up. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> this kid, I love watching this kid play. What a throwback player. But I'm going to have to speak to him about getting a pair of floppy socks. That's what he needs. He would complete the look with the floppy socks. X tried to dish it over. Xavier Hill can, show, can throw some of the prettiest passes this side of Larry Bird. Turn around. Wide open underneath. Loses the handle, though. Gets it back. Quinn Kelp had snuck in sort of behind the defense, but he lost the handle on that ball. There's a shot off, rebound, Hazen. Comes Xavier, looking across. He had two white play, two uh, purple players over there. Lamar takes a three, doesn't go. Rebound, Mitchell. Michael Moore says he likes the old Hardwick uniforms. Yes, chiming in on the chat here. Once again, we're celebrating Hardwick Academy, the, the Hardwick Terriers. They were in the purple and gold. Shot short. Rebound Hazen. Lamar hands back to X. X inside, turnaround, Mitchett up between two players. Gabriel Mitchett putting some points on the board for the Cats. 33-5, 450 left to go in the first half. X. Laflam back out. Lamar over to X. Xavier Hill is going to try and sneak it inside, throw a shot up off the glass, doesn't go, gets rebound, back up again, still doesn't drop, rebound PA. Nick Pierce got him behind. There's a floater taken by Camden Strong, 33-7. Pass inside. 
Nice attempt by Morgan Mitchin. He'll go to the line and shoot a couple. Foul called on Camden Strong. With 4.13 left to go here in the first half, and your Hazen Union Wildcats slash Hardwick Terriers leading 33-7. to Mitchin, first one. Good. Brendan Moody and Ryan Morrison check back in. Lamar and Laflamme go out. Mitchin. Off on a second one, but rebounded by Gabe. Gabe of the Big Blue Ox puts that one in. Frazee underneath gets it back. Pierce to Kelp. Over on the far side, that is Dylan Knight back inside, throwing up a shot that doesn't go. That was Nick Pierce trying the shot that didn't go. Rebound, Hazen. Mitchin doesn't go. And Gavin Bell checks in. It's a good thing I know these guys because the numbers aren't matching up. And Fenton Meyer. Foul called on Gabriel Mitchin, his second. 3.20 left to go in the first half. Cats up 36-7. Floater doesn't drop. Rebound, Hazen. X, pass inside. Looking at Meyer, didn't go. Rebound, PA. Knight over here on the near side, Pierce. Pass inside. Turnaround, Dylan Knight. 36-9. Inside, Fenton Meyer. There's Blair Whitney. And we're going to have a foul called. Foul called on Ryan Morrison. And back in goes the pistol. And Carter Giron going in and Nick Pierce coming out. PA on the inbounds. Three-pointer. Nothing but net for Blair Whitney. Makes it 38-12. Moody tried to answer back with another three. X chases down the rebound. Hill wants to turn around back inside. He was trying to hand it off, but I think Jamison had stepped out of bounds. Quinn Kalp to Blair Whitney. PA looking for the open shot. Underneath. Too far underneath. Hey, he backed out. A little deep underneath there. X with the uh, rebound. And that was Bell trying to get it over. 124 left to go here in the first half. Cats up 38-12. PA will inbounds. Dylan Knight will bring it up. I tell you, it's kind of easy to get the substitutions with our guys because I, I sort of know them all by sight, but... Uh, there's a shot that's off by PA. Doesn't drop, rebound. It's kind of tougher on the uh, 
PA side. I'm able to pick up on the numbers fairly quickly. Cool. Lamar goes up. Nope, blocked out. Coach uh, Todd Yendo keeping me on my knee, on my uh, toes up here with all these substitutions trying to match up these numbers with names. I mean, here's a guy we haven't seen yet. Okay, who do we got here? Seaman Burgess is coming in. Seamus, sorry, Seamus Burgess is coming in. I know. Yes. And player down. Harrison Freeze. Down. Had a nice conversation with Todd out in the hallway before the game. We talked some basketball. We talked some football. We both decided we're rooting for the Lions. All right, we're under one minute to play. 58 seconds and left to go here in the first cat half. Cats up 38-12. Guide up for that one. Man, that kid went eight feet in the, up in the air. Turnaround. Drops. Carter Giron. All right. Moody. 33 seconds. 38-14 is your score. X fighting his way up. Can't get it to go up. Rebound. The pistol in there. Getting the rebound. Referee Jeff Vincent blows his whistle. Foul called on Burgess. Sullivan Laflamme in, Fenton Meyer out. We got 20.8 left to go here in the first half. And the score is 38 to 14. Cats are inbounding underneath their own hoop. Back Laflamme. Sullivan Laflamme over to Moody. 15 seconds. X. Direct in traffic, 10 seconds. Burgess out on X, five seconds. Moody takes a long three. Moody, I'll tell you, took that three-pointer from the parking lot. 41-14 is your score. And uh, what a three-pointer to end the first half here for the uh, Hazen Union Wildcats slash Terriers. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Michael on tech, Casey on camera. Our sponsors tonight, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and Green Mountain Technology and Career Center, gmtcc.lsd.org. Jumpstart your future. We'll see you back here at the start of the second half. All right, we're about a uh, minute and a half away from the start of the second half here at the Den. It's your Hazen Union Wildcat boys leading the People's Academy Wolves by a score of 41 to 14. It's been all Hazen all the time, and I'm going to wait about 15 seconds. We're going to get a big buzzer here, Michael. How about uh, our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and Green Mountain Technology and Career Center, gmtcc.lnsd.org. Jumpstart your future. All right. And happy to announce to the broadcast position up here. i got Caitlin Davison sitting with me. How are you doing, Caitlin? Good. How are you, Lance? I am doing well. We want to, of course, congratulate you on earning your 1,000th point last night here. Thank you. Um, exciting stuff. Uh, you join now what? One, two, three, four, six other of the of the uh, Lady Cats up there as yep. a 1,000-point scorer. Yeah. i got to ask you, I mean, you got those last two points at the foul line, which to me is pretty clutch. Yeah, I mean, nothing was really running through my mind except, you know, this is it, you know. Um, I looked at Randy, and he gave me the peace sign, you know, you got two left, and nothing really ran through my mind. I was just hoping I didn't miss, I guess, but I didn't really think about that. No, you, if you've ever listened to any of my broadcasts, you hear how I am always talking about people when they miss their foul shots. Do you do a lot of practice with your foul shots or is it something that's just sort of come natural for you um well as a team we haven't been doing very well this year so we work on that a lot in practice um we shoot probably 50 60 foul shots a person per practice and um you know as a team i think we're we're growing but yeah i mean i definitely have been growing throughout the throughout the basketball season underneath that was xavier hill giving us two more points to make it 43 to 14 i mean i just thought it was total clutch when you turned around and, you know, you stuck up one more finger, and everybody's like, yeah, one more finger. And then you just turn, and it was like it was a routine shot, you know. Yeah. No nerve. You, you have ice in your veins, you know. Yeah. Um, 
And then, of course, you, you're, everybody streams the floor, and they go out there to meet you, and you turn, and there's your brother Cody, who you had no idea. Yeah, no, that was that was amazing. Definitely a memory I'll never forget. Um, yeah, I had no clue he was coming. I was basically, I was just, Randy was like, here's the ball. And then he was like, but wait, who's over there? And I looked over there, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've talked to Cody a million times I was like so you come in so you come in and he was always like oh like I don't know because you know it's hard to get a flight home since he was just home for Christmas and he wants to come home for the cha- or for playoffs too so you never know right and it's not like it's just a hop skip and a jump he's out in Utah you yeah, know <laughs> so exactly. uh, <laughs> just exciting stuff now you come I talked a lot about your family you your, your entire family has been tremendous athletes up here you know at Hazen for decades as yeah. brendan moody takes that one was that that was a two yep um you know have the, what sort of influence have they had on you you know you've got you've got some lineage to live up to you know? yeah um you know my dad he was he was a good athlete in high school we've always been watching his i mean championship games when he played at the odd and that was that's been amazing i mean that's a tradition we do every year we all sit down before playoffs and we watch his games and you know that's that's so fun. We get to see how it used to be. And my mom, you know, she ne- she never really played sports in high school, but she's just she's just such an amazing person she's to have mo- in your life. I mean, she's brought us to everything. She's done everything for us, and I couldn't have been nearly as far of where I am today if it wasn't for her. That's cool. The other person I had that I saw you embrace out there was Tessa. You and Tessa have been inseparable throughout your entire athletic careers here Hazen you're both seniors you played soccer you played basketball together yeah you know um it's got to be fun to share that with that special of a friend as well yeah um I've been waiting to you know I knew she was going to be the first person I hugged she has really been there for me for everything every little detail of everything I mean I've been best friends with her since fourth grade fifth grade since she moved here from out of state really and she's just my best friend, and I, I mean, I wouldn't want to share any other moment with it, anyone else. Underneath to LaFlam makes it 47-14. to 14. Hazen with 5.56 left to go here in the third. What, what's, like, one of your earliest basketball memories? I mean, I remember watching you playing in, like, the sixth grade tournament down at Hardwick Elementary. I mean, you just played from, like, day one, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't. I don't really remember this, but my dad has these – old videos on his phone of me playing while I was in fourth grade in Twinfield at one of those tournaments and I mean I watched that and it's just like oh my god like <laughs> it's crazy now you also play soccer as well what's your favorite sport you, you, you favor one over the under over the other are they both sort of equal you're you more know, of a basketball <laughs> girl or you're more of a soccer um I'm definitely a basketball girl I mean I've grown up my back or my uncle Randy he, right loves basketball like he's t- she, he's taught me the love of basketball um soccer you know that's just always been like conditioning should get you ready for basketball exactly i mean i just and even just the chemistry with like the teammates that play soccer i mean they all play basketball too so it's just keeping everyone together for half of the year it's just Definitely, yeah. and that's a great point. Uh, it was Kalb scoring for PA, and then Sullivan Laflam answered back. We got uh, balls down here on the floor. We got everything coming up. X is going to step back and take a three and drain a three. Xavier Hill. I mean, that's the other thing. You girls are such a tight unit, like you mentioned. I didn't think of this until you said that. You all play soccer together. You all play basketball together. Talk about the team dynamic out there. I mean, you're a senior, but you've got some exciting freshmen and sophomores coming up. And I've seen you almost like – coach them and lift them up on the floor um talk a little about the team dynamic i mean yeah um you know i never really like played on a team with them until over the summer when we played aau together for the mustangs but i mean i've always been practicing with them and they've always like came to our practice they've just they're so ahead of their time you know they're just such great athletes and they've always been able to keep up with like my class a senior group so it's just so fun playing out there with them. I would say the future of Hazen Lady Cat basketball is pretty bright, eh? Absolutely, absolutely. No, <laughs> the freshmen are just bringing nothing but greatness to this program. Excellent. Well, I'm going to get you out of here, Caitlin. With a, we got to get a couple of my silly questions in because this is where we find out how, how Caitlin Davison really takes. Before I get you that, you were injured earlier in, in a couple games ago. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, Morrison with the buckets. How's that? You healed? Yeah, I'm mostly healed. I'm still wearing, you know, the brace just to protect it. Um, but, yeah, I pulled my groin pretty bad. That's a tough injury to come back from. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stretching? A lot of, a lot of stretching, a lot of, you know, just rest. Yeah. I took two or three days off from practice, and then I had the weekend to rest as well. So, I mean, it's just a lot of compression playing through it like um our first my first game back i was uh, i mean it was a little bit painful but i it was a game where i didn't really need you, to play anyway you so. looked a little tender you know a little gimpy out there yeah but uh it was i was a little worried when i saw you go down and then i had a feeling it was it was a groin injury and i'm like those can be extremely tough to come back from yeah 257 left to go in the third that's cats up 58 17 we're chatting with caitlin davison here for hctv she scored her thousandth career point last night against twinfield you needed 28 you got 28 with like i think it was like 145 left to go in the first half yeah you got the 28 so yep. um you really poured it in there and and got it going so um all right silly questions i have none prepared so i'm gonna have to go off the top of my head um favorite candy bar Oh, man. I was always a Twix girl growing up, but, I mean, recently I've been I've been a Reese's Cup girl. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Much to the applause of Michael. Um, I usually I usually uh, shot in the foul for Sullivan LaFlam. I usually ask this of older people, um, and I ask, give me a decoration that decorated a teenage bedroom. Since you're a teenager, I'm going to say, give me something that decorated your elementary school bedroom. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Um, I was a One Direction person. You know, okay. I grew up with One Direction <laughs> posters and stuffed animals. It was, that was, that was what I did in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If uh, your mom's going to fix your favorite meal for supper, what are you going to ask her to fix? Oh, I love breakfast for dinner, so I'm going to say sausage, gravy, and biscuits. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Excellent. Um, would you rather have gills so you could swim underwater forever or wings so you could fly? Oh, my God. That's, oh, my God. That's a good question. I'd probably do... I'm going to say gills so I can see the whole new world that's underwater. There is a fascinating world underwater, that's for sure. <laughs> um, let's see. I'll, I'll ask one more silly one, and then I have a serious for you, serious one for you. If you could speak, speak any language instantly, what language would you like to pick? You know, um, like a foreign language. One, one, obviously, you don't speak now. Oh, boy. I, oh, that's a good question. I have no clue. I would say... I don't know. Probably like French or something, French? just because the accent is so fun. And so it would cool. come in handy yeah. around here, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll get you out of here with this, this last bit of serious question. Say, you know, you're somewhere and there's a, a, a seventh grader, or you're down at the elementary school and there's somebody in elementary school, you know, a, a girl player or a boy player that comes up and says, you know, when I grow up, I want to play basketball just like you and I want to score a thousand points. What advice would you give them? Um, I'm just going to say never, never think that you're good enough. Always strive to be better. Always think that there's something that you can work on. Um, always get in the gym when you can and just find someone that you really are inspired by and ha talk to them and listen to them. I mean, my brother, I, I, I get mad at everybody that talks to me except for him just because I'm so inspired by him and I just I want to listen to everything he says. That's cool. Caitlin, thank you very, very much for coming up and thank spending you, the third Lance. quarter with me. Once again, congratulations. Thank you very much. On getting much. your 1,000th point. Good luck going forward to the season. And let's go back to the odd, eh? <laughs> Hopefully. All That's right. what we're hoping for. Caitlin Davison here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 33 seconds left to go. There's Wells with a long shot, doesn't drop. Rebound, Hazen, uh, rebound, PA. Turnaround, Pierce. Makes it 58-19. What a great girl. What a top notch, you know, you gotta love it, you know.
18.7 left to go in the third. Cats up 58-19. Sullivan Laflamme on the inbounds. Gets it back to the pistol. Gavin Bell, three-pointer. Doesn't go. Rebound. Lamar. Turnaround. Puts up the shot. Spinner. Jamison Lamar. And that one doesn't go. And at the end of three, it'll be your Hazen Union Wildcats leading by a score of 60 to 19 over the People's Academy Wolves. Action here at the Den on this Friday night. After this, uh, the boys go on a four-game road trip. They won't be back here to the Den until Friday, February 9th, where they'll play Lake Region. They'll close out their season here at the Den on Friday, February 16th against Thetford. That should be a really good game. Hazen currently in third place in the division behind Thetford and Montpelier. We stand at 6-2 in league, 10-2 overall. And uh, we'll see the Lady Cats next Friday is when we come back here. So we're basically off for about a week until then. Also, Knights of Columbus free throw contest coming up Sunday, January 28th at 1 p.m. here at the Hazen Gym. Open to boys and girls age 9 to 14. And we'll get ready to take on the final quarter here at the Den. Michael on tech, Casey on camera. Lance Hall with the call. Final quarter. That is Quinn Kelp with the shot. Inside. Shot up. Doesn't drop. Three purple jerseys there. Wells looks like he might have took something in the eye. Might have took a poke in the eye. He's coming off. Uh, the officials, I believe, blew their whistles. All right, and I'm glad this person is coming in because Michael and I had a chat at halftime, and uh, I am a complete moron. If you've ever heard the story about how I had the Jasper Hill copy with the artisan cheese and I pronounced it artesian, when I see, like, I, I, these spellings like this, like, the S-E-A-N of Sean. I always go seen. Uh, so I want to apologize to Seamus Burgess for <laughs> calling him Seamus. <laughs> what can I say? I'm an idiot. I am a complete idiot, and I will admit it. So, I, But I just wanted to make that apology to Seamus. I am beyond sorry. And I want to thank Michael for correcting me. <laughs> Because if you remember right on the artesian, art, the artisan artesian thing, my dad actually called me from Florida at halftime to tell me, Lance, I, I think your copy is it's, it's artisan. <laughs> what can I say? So, Seamus is a sophomore, so I'll have two more years to get his name right. <laughs> and good. As Fenton Meyer gets his first points. I think, I'm not going to give out scoring because I think I've missed a few there in the third maybe when I was when I was chatting with Caitlin. But what what a great, you know, humble, um, inspirational, and just a great level-headed girl um, to chat with. 61-19. And I always admire any of the students that will come up here and talk on air. Um, you know, they get intimidated. And I'm, I always tell them, no, we're just going to go up here and we're just going to have a, have a conversation. Seamus with the turnaround inside. Gives him his first points of the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just great kids. Great kids that come up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Buffy does has a, have a way of... Oh, uh, the Buffmeister. Buff off the cuff. She has really brought a lot 
to the soccer broadcast, though. I thoroughly enjoy working. Sullivan Laflamme turnaround with Buffy. Um, great soccer knowledge. She sees so much out there. Okay, we have, I think, a referee timeout, maybe? I'm, I'm not sure what. I have no clue. I thought somebody had called a timeout. Players started coming out onto the field, onto the, onto the, yeah, on the field, on the court. But uh, referee John Diebold kind of waved everybody off. Sixty-three twenty-one, six ten left to go in the game. Try another shot. That one doesn't go. Save in. Laflamme comes up with that one. He's got Sheamus on his tail. So, Sully, no, they're going to wave that one off. And are they going to call him on the block? Or are they going to call Sully on the charge? They're going to call him on the block. Didn't quite have his feet planted. And that foul called on Seamus Burgess. Sully. Goes over back inside. Goes through Meyer. Goes through uh, Bell. Neither one of them can come up with the catch. 540 left to go here in your ball game. 63-21 is the score. Gotten kind of quiet in here. And just in case you're just tuning in, uh, if you notice the cats are wearing the purple and gold uniforms of the Hardwick Terriers, we are setting celebrating Hardwick Academy. Brought us uh, four, uh, three state champions and uh, four runners up. Had a big night last season uh, for the first inaugural Hardwick Academy night. Did an unfurling of a banner up there and uh, once again hats off to Coach Aaron Hill for, for organizing that and recognizing the heritage that goes along with Hardwick Academy slash Hazen Union. And we'll celebrate more of that heritage next Friday night here when the girls play Blue Mountain by unfurling a new banners for the Lady Cats teams who won back in the early and mid-70s as Sullivan sinks his second free throw. Makes it 64-21. We had some teams back in, uh, you know, like 73, 74, I think. Somewhere in there, 75. Coaches and players coming back for that. It's going to be very exciting. Underneath, <laughs> Sullivan Laflamme. Once again, I don't dare to give point totals because I think I might have missed a couple. Foul called on Fenton Meyer. Sully's going to come out. In goes Jamison Lamar. The pistol. And ball skitters out. Here on this national fun at work day. And we always have fun up here. We always have fun. Michael wasn't having fun in the beginning. We had a few technical difficulties, but he got us through it. And now we settle back and we have fun. We know Casey's having fun over on camera, and I'm always having a good time up here. I don't even know if you could call this work. You know, this is just fun. <laughs> fun at work day. Guys that are working are down there on the floor. Four twenty left to go in the ball game. Cats up 66-21. Meyer with the interception. The pistol. Drop pass over to Bell. Lamar. 
That's a two. Uh, that's a three. They gave him a three. Okay, I thought he had his foot in. Jamison. Game of three, 69 21. That shot is off, rebound, Meyer taken away, and he fell out of bounds. Are they gonna call anything? No, they're just gonna call him out of bounds. Well, they are gonna give a uh, foul to Fenton Meyer, his fourth. Pass inside, turn around, Burgess. Seamus Burgess. It's a great basketball name. The Pistol. We have had great basketball names on our opponent's teams all year long. Tipped away by the Pistol. Bell. Can't get it to go. Turn around. Morgan Mitchell. 74-23. 3.05 left to go in the ball game. Strong. Back over. Dips inside. Sharon back on the far side. Taking that shot. Doesn't go. Rebound. And it's going to go to PA. And Coach Todd Yando out to chat with John Diebold for a minute. Ethan Gann coming in for the Wildcats as Meyer will step aside with 254 left. Shot dropped by Camden Strong. Cross court. Ball through. Lamar. And I'm seeing, oh, that's okay. Number five is Lincoln Hill. Two minutes left. Catch is playing keep away, running some clock. Lamar comes down with that one. Pops a three, doesn't go. Rebound Hazen back up, doesn't go. Rebound once again, wrestled away. And that was Gabe Mitchett. Or was it Morgan? Morgan, Morgan Mitchett, sorry. Morgan. Makes it 76 26. 130 left. Burgess goes down. One twenty one left. Foul called on uh, they haven't put it up yet. All right, here's Wells back in. On the inbounds. One twenty one left. Burgess up, can't get it to go. Burgess getting a rebound, fighting away underneath there, goes down with Gann hanging on to him. One eighteen left. Lamar hands off. Bell inside. Ball will go underneath the hoop with one oh nine left. Lamar pass over. 
Morgan Mitchell. Just <laughs> Lamar, a, I can't wait to see this kid with some more experience. I mean, he's just a wizard out there with the ball. 52 seconds, your score is 78 to 26. Burgess was trying to get that one over to Wells. And Bell wasn't ready for that one with 41.5. That'll turn the ball back over to PA. So Hazen will push their record to 10-2 uh, and two overall. 11-2, uh, excuse me, 11-2 and two overall. And once again, they're going on a four-game road trip. Uh, they'll be going to, uh, they play at U32, at Montpelier. That's going to be tough. At Stowe and at Williamstown. And at North Country. That's five. Five game. Five game road trip. Before they get back here on the ninth. 12 seconds. Three pointer taken. Short. Underneath. Shot back up. Still doesn't drop. 2 1. That'll finish the game. Your final 78 26. Here from the Den where we've been celebrating Hardwick Academy.